Um, I think very few people are basically dying from HIV for the most part. I think the majority of my patients that are dying from HIV are those that are not taking their medications. Mm -hmm. And I think that medication adherence is so key. It's very difficult, especially in the adolescent population, where adolescents tend to push limits, take risks, and try other things. That's why we worry about um, smoking and drinking and other teenage driving and other things like that that we worry about that have higher risk. And so we really need to make sure that our adolescents and young adults are being supported in a clinical setting that doesn't just say, here's your medications, good luck, I'll see you back in three months. Um, and I think that providing health care that can do that is something that's really important. And one of the things that I'm very proud of my adolescent program is, is that we're able to actually have, on average, 26 contact points with our patients every year. So every two weeks we have a contact point with our patients. If that's through um, a communication, if that's through a phone call, if that's through um, some electronic media, or that's a face-to-face, -face, I think that kind of direct interaction with our patients is really making a difference in being part of their lives and helping them to um, take their medications and stay adherent and prevent transmission to other people, but also to ensure their longevity and health. So HIV treatment has come a long way. We've gone from someone taking literally up to 25 pills once a day or twice a day or five times a day or six times a day in order to treat their HIV to be able to take one pill once a day. So that's much easier. There are very exciting clinical trials that are on the um, that are in phase three at this point actually that are enrolling. They're taking a look at injectable medications that you can take one injection that can last for an entire month. And there's other combination medications that you may be able to take a medication that lasts for three months with a medication that lasts for one one month is an injectable. So much like we're able to provide Depo-Provera, we're able to provide other long-acting birth control modalities, we may be able to treat individuals with medications like that that is very easy to take and may make it much easier for patients so they don't have to remember to take medications every day. I think that's very exciting. I think prevention is another thing that's very exciting, and I think New York State has really taken a, a very strong approach on this when Governor Cuomo came out in 2014 to having a three-point plan to helping to decrease the number of cases of HIV by 2020 down to the number of cases of tuberculosis that are in New York State. And that's a phenomenal effort, and one of the key points of that plan is HIV prevention by using PrEP. So by having a modality of PrEP in preventing transmission, I think that's a great resource that's coming out that's going to be available. There's a lot of exciting individual um, studies that are coming on the line to take a look at cure. There's some interesting studies taking a look at neutralizing antibodies that are coming around the pike, which I think are very exciting. We have some very effective combinations of neutralizing antibodies, which can combine together as different antibodies that can bind HIV and basically um, absorb the HIV and can basically go on a seek and destroy type of mission. And I think that's very exciting for some of the studies that are coming along. We're not there yet. We have a lot of work to do. This is a difficult uh, s medical solution to to solve, but I think that we have ideas that are starting to become very exciting about ways we can address the host immune response as well as the virus itself and be able to look for latent memory virus um, and be able to find um, some of the few copies that exist in the body still.